Oh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Turn to discuss a pretty useful strategy for integration. Now, basically, as I showed in my earlier videos, integration integration is more challenging than differentiation, and that's uh, when you look at derivatives or differentiation. The formula is usually pretty obvious which one to use, but it's not always obvious for uh, figuring out which integration technique to use. And also in my earlier videos, I covered individual techniques, but for specific, yeah, for specific cases such as integration by substitution, by parts, and by partial fractions. But uh, yeah, selection of which, yeah, or selecting which technique may be challenging when you're integrating uh, functions. But basically, understanding and memorizing the basic techniques and formula is first, uh, first most uh, important in developing a strategy for integration. And I'll get to that strategy in a bit. But basically, uh, before we get to the strategy, the following table of integration formulas is important to memorize. So you have all of these table of integration formulas. For example, integration of ex, that's just ex, integration of uh, xn, that's something like that. And uh, just to note that the formulas and asterisks need not be memorized, uh, but they're useful to know if you do memorize, because they can save you some time, because they're easily derived. For example, formula 19 can be used by, uh, it can be avoided by using partial fractions. That's this one right here. So this is a more complicated formula. Formula 20, this one can be used, well, uh, trigonomic substitution to uh, just, just be using that in that integral and the, to get this without having to use its formula. But again, this is useful to note because it could save some time. Yeah, so now let's get to the strategy. Basically, once you understand and memorize these basic integration formulas, and if you don't immediately see how to solve an integral, then you can try the following four-step strategy, which is over here. Step one is basically simplify the integrand or the function inside the integral if possible. So sometimes using algebraic manipulation or trig identities, they will, this will uh, simplify the integrand and make the method of integration obvious. And here are some examples. Yeah, the first example, if you have an integral of, let's say something like this, uh, integral of square root one plus square root x, uh, and then dx right here. This one, you could easily just multiply this inside. So we get integral of square root x, and then plus right here this is going to be just x yeah dx and this one we could use the uh, the formulas above to solve these two so that's that simplified and one with trig if you had one let's say uh, I'll just make a new example here integral of tan theta over secant squared theta d theta what we could write is well if we just expand these out using trig identity so tan that's just sine theta over cosine theta, and then secant squared, that's just one over, well, cosine squared theta. And then d theta right here. Now these would cancel, so we're left with, well, this right here. This cosine cancels with this, we're left with integral of sine theta cos theta. And again, we could use this trig identity where this equals two, the sine theta cos theta equals to one half of uh, sine two theta, d theta. So we just use trig identities to get it to here. Now we could just use the formula for integration of uh, integral of sine to solve this. And uh, one more example that we could simplify is if we had something like this, integral of sine x plus cos x squared dx like this. Now if you expand this square out, we get basically multiply this out, this will be sine squared x plus two sine x cos x, and then plus, well, cosine squared x, and then obviously this dx. And again, the uh, addition of these two right here, yeah, the addition of yeah, the addition of sine right here, let's put these together, this and this, we have sine squared x plus cos squared x equals to one. And now this top part right here, we already know that from above. So that's just gonna be, well, uh, sine theta two theta. That, that's just uh, times this by two then. 
So this equals two, I don't know why my screen keeps going to the left. But anyways, this becomes integral of one plus, and then this is gonna be well assigned to theta. That's just what that equals that, that trig entity, or x right here, instead of theta. Yeah, so now the second uh, step, if we can, if the first one didn't work, uh, the simplified integ integrand, we can look for an obvious substitution. And uh, basically we could try to find well, we need to find some function u equals g of x in the integrand whose differential du equals g of x, uh, g prime of x, also occurs. So we need to find it where the derivative of it also occurs in the integrand, apart from obviously the constant factor that usually occurs, and you could just take that out of the integral. As illustrated in this following example, so if you have something like this, x squared minus 1 dx right here, now the integral of this, well if you look at it first, if, if uh, u equals 2x squared minus 1, just look at this, this part right here, then the derivative or differential du equals to 2x and then dx. So then now you, as you can see in this substitution we have an x dx and this derivative occurs here, well, again ignoring this constant 2, it occurs right here. So basically we could um, replace this here, x dx equals to, well, du and divided by 2, just get this 2 out of there. So now we could plug this in, we get 1 over 2 integral of du, and then u. And now we could easily uh, solve this using the substitution uh, formula, I mean the integration formula. So as you can see, we want to use substitution to cancel one of these out, replace it with um, a du or a u, etc. And now if we look at step three, if the first two didn't work, we, we can classify the integrand first according to its form. So if steps one and two don't lead to the solution, we could take a look at the form of the integrand, f of x, we call it f x. So if it's a trigonomic function, so we look at if f of x is a product of sine and cosine, no, of powers of sine and cosine, such as sine squared x, cos squared x, or something uh, like that, at, uh, or, or, or power of 3, etc. Or the same thing, but with uh, tan and secant, or cotangent and cosecant of x. Then we could use trigonomic substitutions, and I've shown this in my earlier videos, so make sure to watch that in the video link below in the description. And, uh, and if the integrand f is a rational function, then we could basically use partial fractions, like I showed in my early video as well, so make sure to watch those. So, uh, and, and then the last one as well, if integration by parts. So if f of x is a product of, well, a power of x, such as x3, x squared, or even a polynomial, such as x squared plus 1, etc., in a transcendental function, uh, this is basically any function that does not fit a polynomial yeah, equation, uh, and I went over further on this in my earlier video way back, but basically such as trigonomic functions, exponential functions, or uh, logarithmic functions, etc., then we try integration by parts. So if you have a product of these two, a multiplication of these two different types of functions, we, this usually works, and this uses the fact that the derivative of a polynomial gets simpler and makes the integration easier. For example, if you had like this, x plus 1, and then cos x. So this is a polynomial, uh, x right here, dx. So if you have something like this, so the idea of by parts, if you look at it, uh, what this does is integral of u dv equals to uv minus, and then v du. So the idea is to get a simpler derivative on the right side here, and so that's why we would look at this x plus 1. So if we let let's say let u equals to x plus 1, then then basically right here what we get is du equals to dx, and then, uh, yeah, that's just dx. So as you can see, this sim this got simpler right here. So, and also if we, we would let dv equals to, well, that's this part, so this right here, cos x, dx, and the idea of this one, this doesn't change much in terms of difficulty, so this gets simpler, Alright, this part gets simpler, and this doesn't get changed much when you look at the integral. We know that integral of, of v, that's just equals to, well, sine of x. The, the, the derivative of sine of x, that's just cos x uh, dx. 
So when we plug this all in, we get integral of x plus 1 cos x dx equals 2, then u and v, so we have sine x, and then u is x plus 1. So x plus 1, sine of x, and then minus integral of, now we have this dx, and then the v is sine of x, and then, well, dx, that's the new uh, du. So that's this part. So as you can see, we could solve this easily using the formulas above. And now the other type of, uh, yeah, yeah, the other type of form that integrand could be as well, uh, a radical. So basically, particular kinds of substitution are recommended when the certain radicals appear. Radical is just a square root or a anything to the power of one over a number, such as this right here, root n. That's the same thing as writing. Let's say if you have x one over n, that's just equals to a uh, radical like this. So that that's a radical. So if if the radicals appear in this form, where we have this first one this um, nth root of plus minus x squared plus minus a squared. So if it's something like this, we could use trigonomic substitution. And again, watch those in my earlier videos in the description below to see how to apply this there. And also, we could also use a rationalizing substitution for the following, uh, following radical like this, where it's ax plus b inside this uh, nth root. And more generally, yeah, this works for uh, this right here here for uh, n g of x, so this sometimes works, but it uh, more, more often not works in this case, so we would let the substitution u equals 2 n a x plus b, and then this we would hope to make it a rational function, or uh, using this rationalized, yeah, basically that's the concept, is make the function that's not rational, because it's a radical, into a rational uh, function using this substitution, and hence called rationalizing substitution. And more generally, yeah, again, once again, if it's like this, you would use this substitution, nth root of g of x. And this sometimes works, but this most of the time uh, works right here. Now the fourth and final step is basically, well, try again. If it at first doesn't succeed, try, try again, like that old saying. Basically, if the first three steps have not produced the answer, remember that there are basically only two methods of integration, substitution and by parts, and these other types, trigonometry, partial fractions, is, a, is kind of a type of substitution. So first we would, uh, a, again, try substitution, even if no substitution is obvious, uh, as in step two, and because sometimes some inspiration or ingenuity or even desperation may suggest an appropriate substitution. So just try it even if you're not yeah, certain that it will work just to see what will happen. Now also in that same uh, method type, basically you just try uh, by parts. And although although integration by parts used again most of the time on products of the form described uh, above in step 3c, it is again sometimes effective on single functions. And again, from my earlier videos, I've shown that it works on um, inverse tan of x, inverse sine of x, and ln of x, or natural log. And, and uh, note again that these are all inverse functions. So if we were to look at, let's say, integral of ln x dx, and then, for example, if you were to consider uh, using by parts, so we have, let's say, by parts, just to show you the idea that not always you, you need the exact same form as above. So by parts, we have, again, u dv equals to uv minus v du. So in this case, uh, this ln of x becomes simpler, so we would want that to be the du eventually. So what we do is, is u, yeah, so basically let u equals 2 ln of x, so that the du, the derivative equals to well, 1 over x. Yeah, 1 over x, and again, dx right there. And now, uh, when we look at v, this, I mean, dv, that's this part, that just equals to this. So dv equals 2x dx. So the integral here, actually, whoops, not x dx, that's just dx right here. This is part, of, that's ln x. Yeah, my bad there. So dv equals dx, so that the v just simply equals to uh, x right here. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, this just equals to x, actually. Integral of dx, that's just x. So when we plug this inside, we get integral of ln x dx equals to uv, where this is the v is x, and then the u is just ln x minus integral of v, which is x, times by 1 over x, and those just cancel, 
and we'll have a dx right then you could easily solve this now uh, another thing you could do is basically manipulate the integrand uh, basically algebraic manipulations perhaps rationalizing the denominator or using trig identities may be useful in transforming the integral into an easier form and these manipulations could be even more substantial than the ones I showed in step one and may involve some ingenuity. Here's here's an example that's pretty interesting right here. Let's say you had an integral of dx over well, 1 minus cos of x. So again, this, this doesn't seem obvious how to solve this, but if we were to, let's say, multiply both uh, top and bottom by 1 plus cos of x, I'll show you what happens. So if we have uh, dx, I should take the dx out, so 1 over 1 minus cosine of x right here, multiply 1 plus cosine of x, and then this is 1 plus cosine of x. So the idea of here is that we get this uh, cosine of x on top, and then we create a cosine squared of x, as a lot of identities have a the squared of cosine. So this equals 2, This and again we do a positive instead of a negative, so that we'll have only two terms in here. So if we multiply that bottom out, we get 1 over cosine x, and then we have oh, at the bottom, multiply this out, we get a 1, then we always have a, uh, a negative cos x plus cos x, those cancel, and then we're left with, well, minus, this the next part times by these two together, cos squared of x dx. So this idea is, now we have this, where we know equals to, well, sine squared of x, that's just an identity, so we get 1 plus cosine squared of x uh, divided by sine squared of x and then dx right here. Now this equals 2. Yeah, just dividing it out, we get, well, co uh, 1 divided by sine squared, that's just cosecant squared of x, and we could use the formula for that, and then plus cosine x sine squared of x and again we could uh, solve this using substitution or whatever there is but this is easier than it is now and yeah we could just use substitution uh, over here letting u equals 2 sine of x and then again du equals 2 um, cos x dx and that gets rid of the um, yeah it gets rid of this cos x dx right there so we could use that later now another thing we could do is basically relate the problem to previous problems that uh, you've solved before. So again, when you've built up some experience in integration, you may be able to use a method or a given integral that is similar to a method you've already used on a previous integral. And you know, or you could, may even be able to express the given integral in terms of a previous one that, uh, as I as I will show in this following example, if we have the integral of tan squared of x secant squared of x dx if we apply the trig substitution here where this equals to secant squared of x minus 1 what we get is yeah, again secant squared x minus 1 times secant squared x dx multiply this inside we get basically uh, secant squared I mean secant cube of x and I'll, and I'll just take this out of there quickly, and also this multiplies inside secant of x, they put dx right here. Let's make the integral s uh, uh, separated, just uh, skipping a step. So we get this part, and now we already know this. Well, I solved this already. I solved this before in my earlier video, and you could see this before. So you could just use what you've already solved, plug it in here, and then we just need to solve this right here. So you could save some time. And now the final thing you could do is, well, uh, just no, note that you could use several methods. Sometimes two or three, or even three methods are required to evaluate an integral. And the evaluation could involve, well, s uh, several successive substitutions of different types, or might even combine integration by parts with one or more substitutions, etc. Many different variations. And in later videos, I'll go over some examples illustrating the process or strategy of choosing appropriate methods to go about and um, integrating any any given function. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned from this uh, pretty, uh, pretty useful breakdown and strategy on solving integrals. So make sure to go over it as it will help you out a lot. And also, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another 
Math easy solution. <laughs>